Hey guys, so on the Forza subreddit lately, I've been seeing a whole lot of people asking, how do I drift? How do I get the best drift tunes? Does anybody have drift tunes for so-and-so car? So I decided to make a post, a few days ago I did, um, and it got, as you can see, it got a whole lot of attention. I don't think I've seen a post on this forum or on this subreddit get this many upvotes, um, especially not a text post. Um, and with the amount of attention that this post got, I felt like I didn't give enough information to all the people who really wanted to get into tuning who think getting into it is too vast and too difficult because it kind of is there's a whole lot of stuff that you have to consider when tuning your own car all right so before I get into this I want to explain and disclaim a few things to anybody who might have found this post not through reddit by searching how to drift in YouTube uh, maybe but number one being good at drifting is not about having the best tune I could tweak this car right here I could tweak every aspect of it to make it drift as best as possible for me and then someone else who's really good at drifting could probably potentially I mean do better than me in, an, in a car that's almost stuck so it's r really more about learning how to control your tune more than having a really good tune alright secondly I am not the best drifter nor do I make the absolute best tunes otherwise I'd be number one on the leaderboards right now which I'm not but I simply feel like I'm well versed enough to be able to help you guys. Um, this spot right here is my favorite zone, and it's probably the most popular zone. As you can see, I have a score of a high score of 131,000, which is top 1% in the world, and it's place 150, I believe. No, 133 in the world. So I feel I'm well versed enough in drifting and tuning my own cars to be able to help you guys out who really want to get into it. All right, third. This is probably the most important, and I probably should have started with it, but. This guide is not for people who just want to get a tune and get three stars never drift zone in order to get 100% completion. This guide is for people who really want to get into tuning and they want to know every aspect of the tuning options and every aspect of the upgrades and how it affects your car and how you can use those different things in order to get the highest scores in all the drift zones. Um, I will not be talking about all-wheel drive. I don't drift all-wheel drive. Um, it makes drifting way too easy. It's not true drifting, no matter how you put it. Um, it just it makes things way too easy, and people who use all-wheel drive um, are generally looked down upon by like avid drifters, people who have been drifting in the Forza games for a long time now. Um, and it's just it's just way too easy. So I'm not going to be getting into that. If you want to have an all-wheel drive tune, like I said, just to get three stars in every drift zone go to someone's storefront, download a tune that's got like four or five stars, and just go from there. Um, fourth, uh, not too much of a disclaimer, but if you guys are just looking to get a rear-wheel rear drive tune and get three stars and you don't really want to get that deep into drifting, um, you can just go to my storefront. My gamertag is TE37s. I have 14 tunes up right now. Um, let's see, I have a GT86, I have a GTR Horizon Edition, I have a Lexus RCF, I have a Fairlady Z, I have a BMW M3 2005, I have two different RX-7s, I have an M3 Horizon Edition, I have an S15, I have a BRZ, I have a 240, an M4, and another Fairlady. So if you guys just want to get a tune and get the three stars out of the way for completion and not watch this whole video, just check these out. They're all four or five stars, so uh, mostly, so I think they're all pretty good. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a run in this car with this tune I have right now, and then after that I'm going to reset the tune back to default, aside for ride height because I have rally springs on, um, and I'm going to do that in order to show you guys how much of a difference a good tune can make. to the top and I'm going to reset this tune back to stock. Alright, so as you guys can see, 
I've reset this tune back to default. Everything's back to default aside from the ride height because I'm using Rally Springs and I don't want to be four feet off the ground. But everything is back to default. So now I'm going to do a run with this default tune in order to show you guys how much of a difference a good tune can make. the best of runs but as you can see the car snaps back way too fast and it can't get and keep as much angle as the tuned version can. So now we're going to go back to the garage and I'm going to walk you guys through how to choose your drift cars and how to upgrade and tune them in order to make them the best as possible for you. Alright, picking a good car. There's only two things that you need to steer clear of when making a drift car. Those two things are mid and rear engine cars and cars that aren't or can't be converted to rear wheel drive, which I don't even know if there are any of those, but if there are, steer clear. Mid and rear engine cars can be identified by this little graph right here. As you can see, this little white brick thing, which is the engine, is located in the middle of the car. This means the engine is mounted behind the driver. Mid and rear engine cars are cool, but they are not really ideal for drifting. Having the engine in the mid or the back means that there's a whole lot more weight in the rear. This makes it super hard to get and keep angle when throwing the car sideways because there's a whole lot of weight being thrown from the rear end and it wants to spin around. So when you're choosing a drift car, just make sure it's front engine. All right, so if you're new to drifting, I highly recommend using either the GT86 slash BRZ, the Nissan Silvia Spec R, the Nissan 240SX, or I don't have one here, but the Nissan Silvia Club K is also a great starter car. If you kind of know what you're doing with drifting, uh, the Mazda RX-7 makes a great car, and so does the 1997 BMW M3. But the best of the best cars as of right now is the 1997 BMW M3 Horizon Edition. For reasons I'm not 100% sure on, the Horizon Edition of this car has almost twice as much steering angle as this non-Horizon Edition right here, and I'll show you. Alright, so now I'm in the 1997 BMW M3 non-Horizon Edition. If it was the Horizon Edition, you would s it would say it right here. Now look at how much steering angle this thing has. It's not that much. It's the same amount as basically every other car in the game. So now I'm going to switch to the Horizon Edition of this car and show you guys the difference. Alright, now I'm in the 1997 BMW M3 Horizon Edition. Look at how much steering angle this thing has. It glitches through the fenders and everything. It's clearly way more than the non-Horizon Edition and way more than any other car I can think of right now. My theory is that it's because the boost skills the drift boost skills of the Horizon Edition version of this, so it's possible that the Focus RS has just as much steering angle as this, but I'm not sure because I don't have one. But this steering angle allows you to go super sideways and come back way more than cars without this much steering angle. So as of right now, this is the best of the best drift cars. Alright, so now that we're almost 10 minutes into the video, let's get into upgrades. Alright, I am on PC, so you'll have to excuse my stupid menu lag, hopefully they fix this soon, but um, I'm going to start with drivetrain. Alright, for all of these you want race. For the clutch, a race clutch will give you faster shift times, which is crucial for, crucial for transitioning or entries where you have to dump a lot of speed and downshift, because if you don't shift uh, fast enough in that scenario, you're not going to be able to get the wheel spinning again, and then you'll probably either spin out or just head to the center of the track. Uh, for a transmission, obviously you want race for the same reason as the clutch, it's just faster shift times. Uh, for the driveline, um, you definitely want race because it improves throttle response, and it's crucial for getting the revs back up when you're about to get traction. For the differential, it's very important to have this because this allows us to adjust the differential acceleration and deceleration rates in the tuning options. Alright, up next is platform and handling. You're going to want race brakes, obviously, because you need that stopping power in order to sit on the e-brake and milk those points out. For springs and dampers, this is where it kind of gets confusing and might be really odd for people who have been drifting for a little bit and aren't too up to date on the newest things. 
most of the time, in the past, people would use race springs and dampers. And there's really no problem with that even now. But, since Horizon 2, I think, is when it got really popular, using rally springs and dampers is the best because this allows you to have softer springs and that means more body roll, which helps you keep angle. All right, you're gonna want race, front, and rear anti-roll bars. This unlocks the anti-roll bar section in the tuning options, and we'll get into that later. Chassis reinforcement and roll cage. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. You're either gonna want completely no roll cage at all, or a full race cage. The way to identify if you need either is the weight distribution of the car. As you can see here, this BMW has 50-50 weight distribution. If you have a roll cage, it evens out the weight distribution of your car, so this car in particular doesn't need it that much. If your car is 55 per se weight distribution, you're going to want a roll cage in order to even that out. Now weight. If your car is around 23 to 2400 pounds, which I consider a little bit too light, you're going to want the roll cage in order to add that extra weight. If your car is too heavy, regardless of your weight distribution, too heavy maybe be around 3,000 after weight reduction you're probably not gonna want a roll cage all right weight reduction this one's pretty easy you're almost always gonna want race weight reduction this helps even out the weight distribution and also makes your car lighter obviously now it's kind of the same deal with chassis reinforcement you need to pay attention to your weight distribution and your weight if your car is a little bit too light which is around 23 to 2400 pounds you might want to consider sport weight reduction instead of race if your car is too heavy you definitely want this all right for aero and appearance I'm not really gonna get into this too deep but the only thing you, you need to avoid in here are the Forza versions of the bumpers and wings etc because these add more grip to the rear um, if you want you can add these and mess with the uh, tuning options that it provides but I have never really done it and I don't find it necessary all right conversions this is where a lot of preference comes into play I'm gonna start with body kits because it's pretty e pretty easy to explain. The body kits in this game allow you for a higher max tire width, so you're always gonna want the body kits, and they're really sexy. So why wouldn't you have one? Drivetrain, you're always gonna want rear wheel drive. All right, for the sake of speed in this video, I'm not going to go over the differences between every single engine option. If you really want to know the differences between i4, i6, boxer engines, v6, v8, v10, and v. Uh, Alright, so I'm not going to go into the differences between every single engine type in this game. Um, if you really want to know the differences between i4, i6, boxer engines, v6, v8, v10s, and v12s, all of that information is on my Reddit post, which I will link in the description. Uh, but for the sake of speed, like I said, I'm just going to go through the three options right here. Stock powertrain, it's a pretty linear power band. As you can see, the green line is pretty straight. Um, this 2.6 liter i6 right here is, like it says, TT, that means twin turbo, so it has turbos. Turbos introduce turbo lag, which is why this green line right here goes gradually up until a point where it hits what's called max boost. This, um, it really depends, this is where the preference comes into play, but it really depends on your type of drifting, so I recommend if you're new to try out the both types of engines. I personally like turbo lag because it allows me to um, transition better. I don't know. It's just my preference. Um, if you want torque down low, then go for a V8. But I'm personally going to go for this 2.6 liter i6 twin turbo. Alright, so as you can see, the aspiration conversion has gone because you can't switch the aspiration for this, but just so you know, it is twin turbos. Alright, so now we're going to get into engine modifications. Now, if you start out with a very high powered uh, car, you're gonna be, you're gonna want to be careful about what things you upgrade. But for a starter, you want to upgrade exhaust to race, camshafts to race, which is very important because race camshafts increase your rev limit, um, which is very important for drifting because that's where you're gonna be uh, in drifting. Uh, displacement, it makes the uh, engine more responsive, which is pretty important, and then the flywheel, of course. Um, once all these things are upgraded, if you have around 700 horsepower already then you're going to want to leave everything else alone if you don't have that much horsepower you're going to want to increase everything else in turn until you have that much um, be careful about upgrading the twin turbos um, too much without upgrading the other things first because this will re result in a whole ton of turbo lag and too much of that can obviously be a bad thing all right now for tires and rims um, i've already picked just a quick wheel this is just the first option just so I could show you guys uh, the rim sizes but um, I personally prefer 18s and 19s um, the reason why I described in my reddit post if you want to go see that go check it out um, but just for the sake of speed I'm just gonna choose 18s right now all right now that we got 18s on the car we're gonna want to choose our tire compound now this is where it kind of gets tricky um, 
The Horizon Edition cars only allow for race tire compound and rally tire compound. If you're doing competitive drifting, most leagues will not allow you to use race tires. It's been this way since Forza 4, I believe, or maybe even before. But um, I prefer to use race tires. If you're trying to compete for the top spots in the leaderboards, you're going to want race tires. Now for tire width. I, for a build around 700 horsepower and around 600, 650 pounds of torque, you're going to want around 245s in the front. If you have too much grip in the front, it's going to be way too snappy during transitions. So you're not going to be able to keep your angle, angle that well. Alright, for rear tire width, I like around a 295 for a build around 700 horsepower. If you have too wide, you're not going to be able to get the wheel spinning and then you're just going to get traction and straighten out. If you have not enough uh, grip in the rear, your wheels are going to be spinning too fast and that often results in spinning out. Alright, so for the sake of time in this video, instead of me going through the track a number of times and then tuning it after each try, instead I'm going to go through every tuning option and tell you exactly what each thing does. Alright, tire pressure. What this does is it increases the pressure in the tire, obviously. What this does is it decreases or increases the size of the contact patch of the tire. This gives you more or less grip. So if you wanted more, less grip in the rear, which is the usual with a drift car, you want to lower the tire pressure. That way you get a bigger uh, contact patch giving you more grip. In the front you want less grip. That way your steering isn't so much effective. That way you can use your throttle more to steer. So for a drift car in a de default tune, you probably want to do around 40 PSI. Gearing, we'll talk about in a second. All right, so for alignment, in a default tune, I usually run about negative two degrees front camber and negative 0.5 degrees camber. Uh, the reason for this, the front camber helps you turn in, which uh, this gives you the ability to swing your car wider and get more angle and still be able to come back from that. Uh, rear tire, uh, rear camber doesn't really matter too much, but it's just been negative 0.5 has been my default tune since around Forza 4. Uh, for toe, you want to put the rear at about negative 0.5. Um, you can play with this. I don't really know if it affects it too much, but this has just been my default for a long time. At caster, I leave at around 6.5. It is not always default for 6.5 for every car, so you want to make sure it's around there. Uh, you usually want to keep this around 5.5 to 7, but I like it at 6.5. All right, anti-roll bars. This is very similar to springs as well as damping. This is very, very important. So if you are doing your drifts and you're spinning out a lot, what you want to do is you want to stiffen up the rear, that way there is less weight being thrown in the back, that way you're getting less angle and it makes it more controllable. Also, uh, softening the front has the same effect as stiffening the rear. All right, it's kind of the same deal with springs. If you're spinning out too much, what you want to do is you want to stiffen up the rear and then soften up the front. If you're not able to get a lot of angle, you want to do the opposite. You want to stiffen up the front and you want to soften the rear. When you're Drift tuning a drift car, this is like what you want to be focusing on. You don't want to focus on the alignment too much. What you want to do is you want to even out how much weight is being thrown in the front of the rear of the cars instead of messing with the alignment too much, like I said. All right, for ride height, you're going to want to lower this about all the way. Um, this has been the standard for a long time, and I don't really think many people mess with this that much, but you can if you want. All right, damping. This doesn't really need to be messed with too much, but what I suggest is moving the rear or making the rear a little bit softer than the front for both rebound and bump stiffness. If you're spinning out, you want to stiffen up the rear and soften the front, and if you're not getting enough angle, you want to stiffen up the front and soften up the rear. All right, for arrow, we don't mess with this. Um, you can if you want. I couldn't give you any advice on it because I don't do it. All right, braking. You want to leave braking balance at 50%. This is very, very important for tandems and also just kind of in general for drifting. Let's say you have 55% uh, balance in the front. What this is going to do, it's going to brake your front wheels harder, which in turn is going to make you spin whenever you're hitting the brakes. If your rear is too high, or is it, let's say, 45%, what's going to happen when you hit the brakes is that your front is going to keep going forward, and you're probably going to end up straightening out. So you want this at 50%, so that way when you brake, you just kind of keep going at the same angle. All right, for braking pressure, I prefer it at 200%. Um, this really doesn't make too much of a difference. It's just kind of just my default. You can mess around with it and see what it does yourself. All right, differential. Acceleration, you always want at 100%. This is very, very, very important. For deceleration, I prefer it at 0%. I don't really ever mess with it, so I couldn't give you guys too much advice on what exactly it does. But acceleration at 100% is very, very important. What this does is it keeps the wheel spinning at the same speed, no, regardless of what angle you're at. Um, if you're oversteering a little bit too much or spinning out too much, you could... Uh, try and mess with this, lower it a little bit to reduce that oversteer, but I just always prefer it at 100%. Alright, gearing. 
a lot of the time this doesn't need that much adjustment. Usually what I do is I will shorten the final drive a little bit and then I will take the third gear and you see the top of the uh, third gear line that's now pink you want to move that to where it's around a hundred and let's say forty miles an hour which I guess would be around there um, and this is for a build with around 700 horsepower if you have more or less you just gotta play with it until you find the right amount uh, usually what I do now is I bring the other gears closer towards uh, the third gear which is my main drifting gear so I bring in fourth I bring in fifth and I bring in sixth what bringing them closer does is it makes you able to downshift or upshift quickly and still keep the wheel spinning if you need to take a tight turn or if you need to go wide if you ever find you're bouncing off the red line too much what you want to do is you want to take your final drive and move it to the left what this does is it increases the speed that your tires have to spin at to reach the max rpms of that gear if you find that when you're drifting and you're nowhere near the red line what you want to do is you want to take your final drive and move it to the right so what you want to do is you want to find that happy medium between lowering it and raising it if you're bouncing off the red line too much that means your power output is very inconsistent and if you're nowhere near the red line that means you're very very close to gaining traction and ruining your drift Alright, so now you hopefully know just about every aspect of drift tuning. If you guys are confused about anything or have any questions, feel free to comment on this YouTube video or preferably comment on my Reddit post where I'm pretty active. If you post there, I'll get to you pretty quickly. If you guys want some one-on-one -on -one help, feel free to add me or send me a message. My gamertag is TE37s, and I'll see you guys on the leaderboards.